All right. I got about two minutes after the hour. Uh, things are starting, the room's starting to settle down. Uh, happy Friday, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to another session for Tips and Tricks. Today's topic is remote access with the SC using the SCV configuration file. And today's presenter is Logan Reese, who is a uh, SC with the federal team. So, Logan. I'll turn it over to you and take it away. And if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask the questions in the QA session, and we'll be sure to address those. Perfect. Thank you very much, Kyle. I appreciate it. Uh, well, happy Friday, everybody. Like Kyle said, my name is Logan Reese. I'm a security engineer working with Checkpoint for our federal team. I'm based out of the Philadelphia region. I'm actually currently in Florida away from my home lab, so I'm kind of improvising a little bit here today. Um, but like Kyle said, I'm going to be go discussing the remote access compliance using what we call our secure configuration verification file. And let me present here right now so I can get some images up on the screen. So the SCV file is something that we've had with Checkpoint since almost the very beginning of using our VPN technologies and whatnot. Um, what this does is gives a um, compliance engine in a very syntactical method, which you can edit to change or ask for compliance on remote um, clients. Everything from what operating system they're working on to what version of an antivirus software that they're using. So just to kind of go over my agenda for today, I want to discuss the need for compliance, especially in our pandemic times, maybe post pandemic times coming up here. Um, the different types of remote access compliance that Checkpoint offers, the secure configuration verification file itself, which I'll be going into depth on, to, to, on today, um, how to set up the SCV file and how to utilize it, the code in the actual SCV file, how to kind of mess with that syntax and change it based on what compliance um, features you would like to use. I'll also be going over some resources that I think are going to be able to help you in using this file in the future. And at the end, um, and also during the presentation, if you have any questions, feel free to just kind of go forward with those. So the need for compliance. Um, the reason I really brought this topic up and wanted to bring this to tips and tricks was over the past year with the pandemic and whatnot, obviously a lot of our workforce is moving to these um, work from home setups or what we're calling the remote workforce. With this comes the need for compliance in the sense that you may have people working from their home desktops and their home laptops, but still connecting back to your corporate resources. You don't want your corporate LAN to be compromised based off of a failure from your employees using um, bad antivirus software or having a compromise on their home network. So with this level of compliance, you need to have these checks to say, if you're gonna connect a VPN to our network, we need you to have X, Y, Z in terms of compliance before we're gonna allow you to access those resources. So a traditional access control policy, that's gonna give you that traffic going back and forth, but it doesn't actually check the desktop itself. So in this sense, this is where our need for this SCV file comes in place. So Checkpoint has three really main ways to check for compliance in these VPN setups. Um, those are the endpoint server compliance, endpoint security on demand, and the SCV file, which we'll be going over today. The endpoint server compliance, this requires you to have your separate endpoint management server. And this management server is going to um, look over your remote clients or your endpoints and be able to do everything from checking antivirus and whatnot, checking your OS, doing all of these kind of higher level areas while also providing antivirus software and uh, what we would call our sandblast agent here at Checkpoint. This is a much higher level um, sort of endpoint compliance because this requires you to have that endpoint security that we provide as well. Another offering that we have is our endpoint security on demand. This gives you a very kind of medium level compliance, but this requires this works with our SSL VPN. So this would be what people might know as our mobile access blade. Um, this is not using the IPsec protocol so that it's gonna be a little bit different than what we're gonna be talking about today with the SCV file. That uses, uh, like I said, the 
IPsec protocol instead of SSL. So going into the secure configuration file setup, um, the requirements for it require IPsec protocol VPN turned on, um, the policy server turned on on the target gateway that you're going to be connecting to, um, to have that kind of control over these clients' desktops and their computers. A little bit of know-how to edit the actual SCV file itself. I'll be going into that further in my demo here coming up. Um, but it is a little daunting at first because it is very, like I said, syntactical and it, there's a level of coding involved if we wanna call it that. And finally, you're gonna need uh, obviously a checkpoint endpoint VPN client. I'll be showing how to install that on my client, on my uh, target computer here and how that looks. So whenever we go to the SCV file, there's multiple checks that can be looked at and um, performed whenever it comes to this compliance engine. Uh, the checks that are possible are seen here. We have everything from our um, OS monitor at the bottom le left here, which checks for um, certain types of operating systems on your computer, everything from Windows NT up to Windows 10 now. So if I have a check in there that says, I only want my target computers to be on Windows 8 for what Windows 8 for whatever reason. You can put that kind of check in there. Another popular one is our process monitor. Um, this is a very interesting one because you can have setups that say, I need a certain file to be running on this computer or else it cannot connect. That could be anything from I need a a text file that I created to be open on the computer, or I need this certain proprietary software that my um, company is made to be running on that computer for it to be considered compliant. Um, SCV monitor, this makes sure that the, the SCV files that are on the target computer are compliant with the actual SCV file from your gateway. This is saying we need them to both be on the same standard um, or else we won't, aren't going to allow that to accept. Hardware monitor, I could say that I want only computers with AMD CPUs to be able to check, to be able to be compliant. I want computers with only this certain graphics card to be able to uh, be able to connect. The granularity that comes with this SCV file really comes down to how much you want to dig into the code here and how much you're willing to kind of work with that. So the syntax that we have on the left here kind of gives an overview of what the actual SCV file looks like in a um, kind of broken out area. What we have here is the SCV name check at the beginning. This would be like the checks from the previous page such as OS monitor or antivirus monitor or whatnot. For an example on the right here, I have reg monitor where it monitors your registry and checks for certain types of software and if those keys exist. Um, whenever we get into the actual check itself, there's parameters. Um, and these can be logical parameters where we say begin or in this certain instance, we're saying if one of these parameters exists, the key or the string here, then we're going to allow this and say that it is compliant. We can also have and operators um, to check for this and other different types of logical operators. At the end of our syntax here, we, we see that we have a mismatch, mismatch message and a send log. For the logging, we can have this to alert the user or send a log just to the gateway to um, not alert the user. And you can also have messages here that pop up to say, you know, you did not comply with this certain SV, SCV check. Please remediate this however you may need to do that or go forward um, some other way. Uh, just checking the chat here because I see we do have a question. Can I do an exception? For example, use register monitor with SCV for allow only domain computers. But if I have partners, how can I do that? So if you can use it to only allow domain computers, you can, uh, I believe group monitor is the certain syntax that you would wanna use for that. You can say, if this user is not part of this domain or this group, we are not going to allow them to connect. Um, in the sense of, but if I have partners, how can I do that? I'm not entirely sure what you mean by if you have partners. Um, unless you're meaning somebody connecting outside of your organization. And in that sense, I 
not entirely sure, to be honest with you. But I know for group monitor, that is going to go through AD and say, um, if this user is connected into this group based off your Active Directory, Active Directory, we will let them connect. Based off the fact that you're saying partners, maybe if you mean somebody outside of your organization, that's where you could kind of go into the logic here and say, uh, if they're part of this organization or they're part of XYZ organization, we're going to be able to allow them in. That's kind of kind of where you're gonna to have to dive a bit deeper into the syntax there and maybe get a little, a little bit more uh, um, fancy with how you're, how you're setting that up. So here's another popular SCV monitor or SCV um, monitor that we that I like to use and have used with previous customers and customers of mine. Um, this is our antivirus monitor. I just wanted to dive a bit deeper to show syntax and show you guys how we kind of walk through this. Once again, we have the SCV name check up here. This is the antivirus monitor. Um, then beneath that and tabbed in is the type of um, the type of SCV check it that it is, and then the parameters for this certain SCV check. The syntax here is tabbed over and very uh, kind of clean, if that if that makes sense. And obviously, the different types of parameters that go with it. For this certain one, for the antivirus monitor, we have the type, which explains which program this could actually be. For this example, we have Norton, but this could have been McAfee, um, Avast, or any other different type of antivirus software you're using. The signature that we have here, this is based off of the date. And this is this goes for Norton specifically in this example. This date is the last time that Norton antivirus has been updated on the target computer. I know for McAfee, this syntax bases off of a code version. I'm sure Avast and other different types of antivirus software is maybe a little bit different. Um, I have some resources at the end of the slideshow today um, that'll give you kind of this syntax and where to find the answers on how to update this based off of each different um, type of program. And then for this one as well, uh, this differs a little bit compared to the last syntax that I showed you where the send log was only an alert. This one will actually send a log to the, the gateway itself. So an admin or whoever could, would be able to look at that. Some global parameters that sit within the SCV file. Um, I wanted to pull this up just to kind of show you the level of control you have based off of if a user is not compliant. At the top here, we obviously have disconnect when not verified. This value can be set to true or false. Um, this will disconnect the user and say, you are not allowed to connect through our VPN if you are not compliant with the SCV checks that we had set up previously. These global parameters here, these all sit towards the end of the SCV file and they can get, once again, pretty uh, granular whenever it comes down to it. Is there a way to make the AV check how current the signatures are versus specifying a specific build since these changes so frequently? Something like not more than X days old. So that's a great question. And I, I think that really goes back to um, the specific type of antivirus here. I know just for the Norton example itself, this bases off of, like I said, the age there, but other programs do use the build type. Um, I'm not sure if that's just maybe how Norton kind of sets up their builds and they don't really go off of build type. But for example, whenever I've set this up with S Semantic in the past, they used, this, they used a date setup as well. And for the customer that I was working with, we set it up to maybe a week previous before we were setting that up. And that worked pretty well for their, their situation. So here are the resources that I really like to go through because as this, as this has been an older technology and hasn't been um, kind of looked at as much in the past, I would say even 10 years, there aren't many resources that really pull much information for it. But since it is becoming much more popular over the past year with everybody moving to this remote workforce, we've been able to kind of get a bit more deeper into the, the information we have on it. Um, I'd recommend writing down these SK articles here, this 66, 67,820 and 147,416. Um, I will be briefly going over SK 147,416 here in a minute just to kind of show you how to set up um, desktop policy and the SCV file. But both of these are very valuable whenever it comes to understanding the syntax and 
going over the SCB file a bit more. So I have another question here. Can I configure with the SCB for VPN client always connected and the user can be disconnected until powering off the computer? I'm not entirely sure what your question is asking there. Can I configure the SCV for VPN client is always connected and the user can be disconnected and pow till power off the computer. So there are checks here and possibly in the global parameters, maybe what you're looking for. Um, I'm not sure. Hold that, hold this th thought here, that last question that I just got. And I might be able to answer that once we actually look at the script itself. But there are checks, um, this might be what you're asking, but there are checks within the actual client itself to say, I want this VPN connection to be active for X amount of hours. If I wanna set that to two hours or I want that to be set to 10,000 hours, that is a check that you can sit, send in there and say that no matter what, as long as they connect for at least one time and they're compliant, we're gonna allow that connection to be considered compliant for the next 10,000 hours. Although I would not recommend something like that, it is possible. I hope that answers that question for you. So I wanna do a brief demo here. Um, give me one second to set this up. So currently I'm using R80.40 here um, to go over this demo and like I said, I'm working from a laptop right now, so please excuse this. I'm not actually working on my home lab here. I'm away from my com computer. Okay then, well then. <laughs> there we go, okay. Okay, so one of the first things you need to do whenever starting to set up the SCV file and actually get this level of compliance for the IPsec protocol um, is to come into the actual gateway that you're planning on connecting to and turn on IPsec VPN and turn on the policy server feature here. The policy server feature, like I said previously, is what kind of says, I'm gonna be able to work with the, my clients' um, desktops and actually control what they have on them. After you have that set up and activated, you're going to want to come into your global properties here. We'll go down to our remote access here on the left side and go to secure configuration verification. This is where you're going to actually tell the policy server and tell the gateway itself to apply this uh, SCV file and actually work with it whenever your um, clients are connecting to your gateway. Um, from here, you can say, you can get a few checks that say, if the verification does not succeed, we're going to block that. Um, and how this policy is going to be installed based off of um, each setup here. Finally, we also have the um, set up to notify the user and generate log if you kind of want to go over top of the SCV file and make sure that you get those logs no matter what. Okay. So after you have that set up, what you need to do is also come into your policy itself. We'll double click that. Um, actually, we need to edit this policy. Make sure you have your desktop security policy set up. This is once again, the policy server that's gonna give us that access to the client's desktops. Once that is set up, you'll be able to come into your access control policy, open your desktop policy and smart dashboard. And this is where you're going to be able to actually edit the, the desktop policy itself. For this example, I do have just kind of an any, any accept rule right now for inbound and outbound roles. Outbound roles are going from your desktop out to the VPN and inbound roles are coming into the desktop. Um, you can get granular with this and say that 
I only want these users to be able to use XYZ service. I want them to only be able to connect over port 443 or port 80 or what have you. Um, and once again, this is kind of going back to your, your AD that you would link to, to your gateway here. So once all of this is set up, you can go into the actual SCV file itself and start editing. Um, for this, I'm going to connect over PuTTY because the SCV file has to be edited through the text file itself. We don't have a uh, kind of a graphical user interface for that. Um, if you wanted to go somewhere down that route, that is somewhere we would want to use the, the endpoint security on demand feature or using an actual endpoint management server to, to go over this. So once you're into expert mode here, um, you're gonna be able to find your SCV file located at firewall directory, configuration, local SCV. Um, I hope this text isn't too small for everybody to see on my computer. I'm working on a scaled down screen right now. So try to make it a little bit bigger there. But whenever you, to access this file, um, you can use an editor such as Vim um, to go forward and actually work with the file itself. Um, before working with this file, I always like to create a backup. I have a backup on this gateway called local underscore backup.scv, just in case you kind of want to go back to that day one um, before you kind of changed everything within there. So this is the file itself. This is a file that I have already changed to make sure that I'm compliant based off of Windows 10. Um, it, it, it can look a little daunting at first, just based off the fact that this is kind of a, a coding setup here, if you want to call it, call it that. And some people may not be used to that. So at the top here, we have what we can see as the SCV names. This is our largest um, kind of check here. And underneath of that, we get each one of our SCV checks, everything from the user policy, just to make sure you're logged into the actual policy server or a few other parameters that may be there down to browser monitor, OS monitor here, where like I said, I'm checking to make sure my VPN clients um, are using Windows 10 computers. Um, we have process monitor here. This is the one that I was saying, um, checks for certain files to be running on your computer. In this example, this is, a, this is the example given to you in the SCV file. It gives you this very generic antivirus one or antivirus two need to be running. Um, I've had customers in the past where we could not get the antivirus monitor check to be running correctly. So we went through and we used the process monitor to say, let's check to make sure this certain EXE file is running just to make sure they even have an antivirus going. Or just off the top of my head right now, you could even use this to make sure you're using a certain program like Zoom or Slack or something just to make sure a user is logged into these certain programs. So here's that group monitor that I was talking about too. Um, this checks to make sure for this example, we have an and statement here that checks, is this user an administrator? We do not want them to be false, but we want them to be part of the group of users. Um, since this is an or statement right above that and, and statement, we also have to check if it's um, once again, going to be part of that administrators or users group. And like I said, you can get pretty granular with those and and or statements, um, depending on how deep you wanna go with that. So each one of these, like I was saying, is each one of our different checks here. So it, it can look a little odd at first, but once you really dive into it, it the syntax itself is pretty self-explanatory. It's just understanding each one of them check the checks themselves to make sure they work. The one thing that does need to be completed before you actually run the SCV check itself is to put the certain checks that you want underneath the SCV policy check. So within this, policy check here. I have process monitor, OS monitor, and antivirus monitor. So when the SCV file runs, it's going to check each three of the, each one of these three and ignore maybe SCV monitor or the, the reg monitor and whatnot. It'll only look for the, the certain ones that I actually want to go forward with here. So we have another question in the chat. Is a sample file anywhere that can be downloaded? So I don't believe this file can be necessarily downloaded from the internet if that's what you're asking.
but any checkpoint gateway will automatically have this SCV file located at that firewall directory con uh, configuration local.scv area. Um, if you have, if you spin up a open server gateway or you have a physical gateway itself, all of these, all of these will be on there. Um, let me actually pull something up real quick here. Within the resources that I gave out, I believe you can find the SCV file written um, within our remote access guide. So this is the remote access VPN R80.10 administration guide for checkpoint. Um, I did a quick Google search for just remote access VPN R80.10 SCV file. And this was the first, um, first thing that came up. Going through here, and this is really why I wanted to pinpoint those resources earlier. Going through this admin guide is going to give you the kind of the know, know how to work with this file in a um, more experienced way and give you the syntax and working with that. Um, I believe going through here, there should be the full SCV file itself. But even with like the, the information here, it shows you where the file is located on the on the devices, on the gateway or the management server itself. Um, going through here also gives you kind of the syntax, the, the syntax that I was showing you earlier and how to work with that, the different types of expressions that are on there. It does take a little bit of work to understand this, but going with my customers in the past and, and the reason they really like this is it doesn't require you to have any extra features. It doesn't require you to spend more money on an endpoint management server. This is something you can get right out of the box with an IPsec protocol connection and have compliance within a few hours if you're willing to set this up. But finally, the last thing I wanna show you just kind of how to actually set up the client itself. Um, what I have here on this, let me make this a little bit bigger. What I have here on this client machine is the installation of the E82.40 VPN client for Checkpoint. Um, when connecting with this, I would wanna use the endpoint security VPN. This gives me that IPsec protocol and whatnot. Secure remote, that's a, a little more archaic at this point, if that's the correct word I wanna use. Checkpoint mobile is gonna be requiring the mobile access client um, and that's gonna give us the SSL connection. The endpoint security VPN gives us these um, compliance engines that we need to run the SCV uh, file. So now that we have this activated, we can see that there's obviously no sites yet configured because I haven't connected to my, my gateway and whatnot yet. Um, and there's no compliance. Um, my VPN, like I said, is not working correctly on my workstation right now, um, but I can still show you what the compliance looks like whenever it's set up correctly. So if you do not set up the SCV file, like we said previously, and you just use this connection, what you're gonna see is this compliance engine set to off, but you, you still may be connected to your active VPN here. Whenever we connect with this setup and we have the uh, SCV file enabled, um, it'll show us that the compliance is configured and either set up correctly or incorrectly based off of what you have checking for in the SCV file itself. Okay, and the way I have my VPN set up here is only to require the username and password. I don't have, obviously, a radius server or anything set up there. So now that our site is created, I will log in with the username and password that I have set up. Um, coming into the details here, we can see the loading compliance verification policy and whatnot. 
And that's just telling me that I am connecting based off of that SCV um, setup that we have there. So I'll disconnect from that just to save myself here. But um, you can see that I am compliant based with the, the organization's uh, security policy. And this compliance engine will only pop up if you have that SCV or other compliance protocol um, set up. So I hope I, that kind of explains everything for you guys here. And I hope I didn't take up too much of our time this morning. But does anybody have any other questions before we hop off of here today? And thank you, Logan. Uh, there will be a recording available after this demo, and I'm sure Kyle or uh, Rob will be sending that out with uh, the resources as well that I kind of that I gave here today. Absolutely. Thanks for thanks, Logan. Um, so, just a couple of additional questions: uh, Can the OS monitor check for specific patch levels? Yeah. So, for the OS monitor, um, let me see if I can actually pull up the code here within that admin guide. So the OS monitor is a good one because you can check for everything from specific service pack levels to um, the, the obviously the OS itself, OS monitor. Okay, so coming down here into the OS monitor, we can see um, the different parameters given in the admin guide, everything from enforce the screen saver minutes to activate. Uh, this means we need to, the user's computer to uh, enforce a screen sa saver after X amount of minutes. Um, we can check the major OS version and the minor OS version based off of a Windows 9, 9X operating system. Obviously, we have the service pack versions here, like you were asking there. So if we want them to have want them to be updated to Windows 10 21 H2 or whatever the newest service pack is there, uh, we do have engines for that as well. Awesome. And what about registry key checks? Yep. So Going through the admin guide here again, um, for registry key checks, we can get once again um, specific for those. Like in this example, if you need to have uh, this certain key on there or or what what have you. And so, like I said, I, I can't recommend enough kind of going through the admin guide here and really diving deep into this if this is something you're you're looking to use. So going back to Julian's question uh, with the partners, could we do a combination of registry key check and specific uh, user group in AD to for that partner? You could, and the the way that I'm thinking about doing that is if you wanted them to to not have one over the one over the other. I believe whenever you get into um this area where we're actually in the SCV policy, you could make the exception to have the, the and or statements to say, I want them to be able to check either compliant with this engine. So I want them to have that registry key check or I want them to be compliant with the group monitor check to make sure they're part of a certain group. And that's where the kind of the syntax is gonna have to come in where you say uh, these and or statements. Okay. Thank you. And that wraps up the questions, unless anybody else has anything further they want to add real quick. So there's um, another question in the chat here right. asking for specific license requirements to use SCV. And that's the nice part about the SCV is that it doesn't use any, that doesn't require any specific license requirements. Um, Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe for all of our gateways, you can have an unlimited amount of remote access connections over IPsec protocol. It's only whenever right, it comes into clients, correct? Yeah, it's only whenever we get into the SSL protocol connection. That's whenever you need to have um, a certain number of mobile access blades. So that without needing that these extra licenses, you're able to have these connections and work with the compliance without um, kind of spending another buck here. <laughs> Terrific. Okay, thanks once again. Great presentation. Uh, everyone, I really appreciate you joining today. Uh, we will have our next session on April 23rd, so two weeks from today. Uh, and uh, we hope everybody enjoys the weekend. And thank you again for attending. Logan, thank thanks you. so much. Definitely. Thank you. And thank you, everybody else. Uh, have a great weekend. Thanks, everybody.